piece of junk. Hi there and welcome to Trash Compactor. In this episode I will be showing you how to paint the tonic sisters that are available from my Etsy store. The Tonic Sisters originally appeared in Star Wars A New Hope, or Episode 4, and had a very brief scene appearing in the Moss Eisley Cantina, and have been one of the most sought after figures since the franchise started. I heartily agree with you, sir. So I've created these resin versions of the Tonic Sisters, Senny and Brie. With resin, and remember it's very brittle, so when you're taking them apart to paint them, the idea is to twist the figure very, very carefully and pull it outwards. These ones are quite tougher than normal. This is a special mix, which is using a slight flexible resin with the brittle resin. Taking the joints in and out can actually make them looser, but there is ways in which you can tighten the joints with various different techniques, which I'll show you later in the video. The Tonic Sister hair which is again in a flexible resin, but it can be quite brittle and you have to be very careful with the strand that goes around the front of the hair. As you can see, twisting the figure takes the head away from the body, but you'll notice there is a slight powder. This is what happens with resin. As it rubs against each other, it does powder. So when you're painting, you have to be careful and make sure that when you take the figures apart, that you give them a really good brush and a really good clean. With resin you can get very fine lines that do appear in the layering of when it's 3D printed. So it's good to double check these before you paint and you can usually do this if you prime them or you do a very light coat of paint over the top and this will highlight any of the defects or the little notches that you get in the resin. So give them a good clean before you do any painting. Uh, I'm just going to use them with a dry brush here just to dust off some of the particles that the resin has created. So you can see the detailing on the figures, you can see there on the legs they have the band that will be eventually be painted red going around the legs. Each of the arms, there's a difference between the two characters because Bria is, uh, or Brie, it depends how you pronounce it, is slightly shorter, even though they're identical sisters, they're, uh, they've got slightly different physiques. So the ideal paints for these is I'm using the Villagia of Villa, I can never say it, Villago paints. Uh, I'm going to be using a uniform green, which I will darken down a little bit, and then I'm going to be using a dark blue, which uh, is the beautiful shades, which matches the Tonica Sisters perfectly. People have different preferences on the way they paint them. Some people do like to use a primer. Um, I tend to find as long as you use some kind of sealant or plastic coat over your figures once you've painted them and you're careful as you're going along, you don't really need a primer. But if it's your preference, use primer because primer will just help the paint stick a little bit easy. Just be very careful not to apply too much primer. So I'm using a wide tipped brush here and I've really really loaded the brush but so it's it's soaked with the paint but it's not dripping and the idea is I'm going to use this and give it a good good flat coat over each of the body parts. So I've painted on the first layer and looking straight at it it's not quite as dark as it needs to be so I've got a little bit of chocolate brown and I'm going to stick a little bit of that in just to knock it down a bit so it doesn't look so vibrant quite a bit of chocolate brown actually. It's still green, but it's just taken that vivid tone off it. And this is still wet, so I can still give it a quick paint. As you can see, that's a much better shade. So that was me painting on a test piece. So I'm now gonna apply it to the actual figure. As you can see, it does go on really, really well onto the resin. Sometimes while you're painting you can find the little notches, that's why I say it's good to give it maybe a loose coat with another coat of paint to identify if there's any little nubbins or any little lines. You may want to do a little bit of sanding and again you see there a little nubbin that's just sticking on the inside so I'm just carefully knocking that off with my X-Acto knife or Stanley knife, whatever you want to call them. The little nubbins are created by supports when you're 3D printing and the majority of these go but sometimes some get missed so apologise for that in advance. It's not my fault. So I'm giving all of these a good good healthy coat of paint only painting the parts that I need to be painted. 
So it's going to be the legs, the arms and the body. And then I'm just going to leave them to have a really, really, really good dry before I come back to them. One of the things I try and do when I'm doing my videos is I try to accelerate them and sometimes skip a process and get, tell you to do something and then I don't follow it myself and I end up having problems. So just make sure that you leave things to dry before you go to the next level. There's no need to rush. Practice what you preach. So for painting the body, I've actually put this onto the end of a paintbrush and tucked it in very carefully into the neck, making sure I don't split the neck or crack the neck. So it's a good fit and it just holds the body quite well. That allows me to be able to cover it in paint without actually touching it. So I'm going to leave that to dry and then move on onto Bria, or Brie, however you wish to pronounce it. I will call her Bria. So for Bria, I'm just giving her a little bit of a clean up, just making sure there's no little nubbins on her body parts. Uh, there are a couple. As you can see, there's one on the elbow. You can scratch it off with your nail or you can use your X-Acto knife. Resin is brittle, but it, you know, you've got to, you do need to apply some force or tension to get it to snap or break. And again, these have been made with a slight flexible resin in them, so there's there's a little bit of leeway, but do again do be careful. If it fell off a shelf, it's very unlikely to shatter, but you know, if it hit a hard tiled floor, it may be in bits. But it can quite happily bounce off your carpet without a problem. You just have to handle them with care. So I'm just giving Bria a good coat of the blue. As you can see, there's no need to mix it with anything else. It's the perfect colour. Uh, it comes up and gives a really, really nice texture. And again, I'm just giving the whole top area of the legs a coat, and then the arms, and then the body. And again, positioning it on a paintbrush so I don't have to actually touch the body. If you do get paint on the peg or on the inside, it won't do any. It won't do any harm. Probably just help with traction a little bit of helping them stick and become a little bit more firm. But again, you don't need to worry about that too much because I'll show you later on a technique in which you can create the joints to make them a little bit stiffer. So there we go, we've painted the bodies. So the next thing I'm going to move on to is the Tonica Sisters hair. So this is in a black flexible resin. Um, you could leave it as it is, but the trouble is because of the translucency of the flexible resin, it does create little see-through areas at the bottom. So what's good to do is to get a couple of paints with the matte paint, adding a little few drops of the gloss as well to create almost like a satin. I don't want it to be put all gloss because I don't want them to have really, really shiny hair. I'm gonna give them a good mix and I'm gonna give it a generous but not overly soaked coat of paint uh, onto each of the, the head pieces because I'm going to paint everything and then construct the figure at the end rather than constructing the figure and then painting it. So the way to do this is to be very careful when you're using anything into it because as you can see it's got a little bit of flex to it. It can snap if you put too much pressure on them. Is to find something to put the hair onto. You could do it onto your finger if you're wearing gloves. Here I'm just using a Sharpie and using the the fat end, the non-lid end of the Sharpie and just pop the hair onto there. It's not a perfect fit, it does move a bit so do be careful not to drop it onto a hairy carpet or something. As you can see my camera decided not to zoom in on the part that I needed you to see which is the hair so hopefully it'll capture this on the next one. So I'm giving this quite a generous coating again with my big wide brush to get a nice spread. Don't want to put too much paint on. Yeah you're in focus. We're out of focus. Um, just want to give it a good covering but not hide any of the detail with the paint. So now move on to the second set of hair and again when doing this be very careful about the strip that runs around the front. Uh, it, you can snap it off if you're too heavy handed. It does strengthen up once it's painted. Uh, it just gives it a little bit of extra support as it is a very very fragile piece that runs around the front of the, the hair. So again given this good coverage not too much to hide the detail. I'm not going to do anything about the inside bottom parts of the hair until later on until these have dried and you can handle them. So I'm going to leave them two to dry off, come back to them later. So one of the next things to do is the skin tone. So I've got a couple of the Viaggio paints, or however you pronounce it, and I'm going to be using a flesh 
what's called a flesh tone and a skin tone. So um, flesh, I believe, is all flesh. Skin tone is Caucasian, white, sort of pale, pinky colour. Why they have to call it skin tone, I've no idea. So the skin comes in so many different tones. The resin heads are printed in a what's called a skin tone resin. Um, however, you get better depth by just giving them a coat of paint. You could leave them if you wished, but I'm going to give mine a nice, generous coat of the skin tone paint, which has been mixed slightly with the flesh tone. Just again knocks it back a bit and stops them looking so anemic. So I've done the heads, I'm now moving on to the hair, and as you can see I'm literally now just painting the insides. Not going too far because it's not going to be seen, but it's just getting the underside of the plaits at the back and the front. And again, being careful not to knock that little strip that runs around the front of the hair. So with that same paint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some of the gloss paint into my previous mix. So here I'm actually just painting the boots, being quite generous with the paint and painting up to the lip where the top of the boots are. I'm using a flat wide brush because that gives me quite a good straight line when I move up towards where the top of the boots are. And I'm going to paint this on all four of the legs. So that's all four of the legs painted. I'm going to just leave them to tack off. I haven't painted the bottoms on them yet so they're not going to stick to my uh, craft mat. Uh, and I'll leave them to dry off. So that's not the most perfect coverage for the boots, so I'm going to give them a second coat later. But as you can see, this, the legs are starting to come together. So the next thing I'm going to be painting is onto the bodies, is the lighter coloured, they're sort of external pants, I don't know how else you call them, they're like knickers, they're over, over underwear. So I'm taking the same colours that I used previously and adding a little bit of white to lift those up so they're a lighter colour of the original colour. So I give them a bit of a mix and now I'm going to be doing the wrist parts of the figure, the neck parts and the knickers. There are ridges on each of the arms so it gives you an idea of where to paint up to. I'm using a very small brush for this because this is sort of quite a detailed area. So I can go up to the lip that goes around the bottom of the wrists and uh, Bria's are slightly a little bit smaller than um, Senny's. So just go around the wrists and you can paint down towards the hands but again don't overload the paint. Just keep it quite well spread out. So onto the external knickers and I have no idea what else to call them. Question who wears their underwear on the outside? The Tonica sisters. So on the pant area of the figures uh, below the belt and typical that the camera is focusing on my rather large hands rather than the figure, there we go. Uh, there is a slight ridge that runs around from the front to the back which gives you an area of where to paint up to. We will be painting the belt later so if you go a little bit onto the belt it doesn't really matter because it will get touched up. But the idea is just follow those ridges naturally down the front, around the back, and then you can connect them up at the bottom. And the good thing about keeping them on this uh, brush that just goes into the neck is that you don't have to touch the body. I tend to find, unless you leave the paint to dry for like 24, 48 hours, it can take fingerprints. At some stages throughout this video, you'll notice I do put gloves on, uh, like latex gloves just to stop me getting fingerprints on the paint. And it's quite weird how the camera picks up the layering from the printing through the paint where actually, to the naked eye, it's actually really smooth, but the, the way the light goes through the camera, you can sometimes see the ridges through the paint, which is uh, quite weird. So, with the back, you can paint right up to the edges because uh, they're... Uh, External pants are quite large at the back. Knickers, as we like to call them in England. And again, just following that little guideline round and then connecting them up at the bottom or crutch area. I'm probably one of the most shakiest painters in the world, so I tend to find as a top tip, just rest your hands on something. 
rest the figure on your finger, keep your your hands flat. It's quite tricky sometimes doing the painting because I've got a camera between me and the item I'm painting so normally I would be a lot closer up to it. So the, your painting will probably be a little bit more accurate and a bit neater than mine. So here I'm painting around the neck collar. Um, the good thing is that you don't really see any of the detail at the back because of the hair so you can just paint on the side areas and just flick your brush around the back and there's no need to finish it off neatly because it just can't be seen. There is a slight ridge to the neck piece so you can paint up to that quite easily. If you do go onto the main area at the front don't worry about it because that gets painted black later. And there we can see I've got her knickers and her collar painted. Or her pants. <laughs> So I'm going to move on, do exactly the same for Senny and duplicate exactly what I did on the Bria with the collar, the cuffs and the pants. So I'm mixing a bit of white into the green just to make it light. As you can see, perfect shade. And again, it's personal preference on what, how, how light you want to go. As long as you don't put white knickers on her because that would look a bit weird. Or pants. So there we go, I'll leave all those pieces to dry. Next thing we're moving on to is to do the red garter that goes around their right leg. So the red garter uh, features in all their photographic pictures. You don't really see it in the film, but if you can see their, uh, the test shots for when they were having their photographs taken during the shoot for A New Hope, um, they've got the, the red garter around their thighs. So I'm just using a uh, vivid red. I do have this the, the Viaggio red which uh, is classed as red but for me it's a little bit too dark. Um, the other red is a bit too bright so what I'm doing is just gonna mix a little bit of these together just to give me the perfect tone. So if you can see if I grab my test leg and I paint that red on To me that's just a little bit too scarlet, it doesn't pop enough, so if I mix in a little bit of the red, if I show you it with the red, to me that's a little bit, a little bit too bright. So by mixing the two together it's just going to give me a happy medium. I actually think on camera you can't actually tell much difference between the two, but I, again personal preference on how red you want their garters to be. So using a small paintbrush it's just a case of following the ridges and painting up to the ridge around the top. And this is where I realised that after I'd done this I got fingerprints on my figure because I really should have put gloves on. So I'm being quite generous with the paint but not too generous so it nice flows up to the edge. I'm going to leave them to dry off. Next thing I'm going to do is move on to the heads. So using the same paint, this is where the tricky bit comes in. This is where you need to paint the eyes. So the Tonica sisters have quite emphasized eyeshadow above their actual eyes. So using the same paint that I used to paint the underwear. And here I'm using my magnifying glasses so I can see better. Um, Unfortunately the white light does drown out what I'm doing but you get the gist. Painting with a very thin brush, watered down paint just over the top of the eyes where the eye shadow would be. Eyes is one of my least favourite things to paint but it's there are easy ways to do it. There's a guy on the uh, Smuggler's Den, if you're not a member of that group seriously recommend joining it. Awesome community of customizers, people who respect each other. But there's some amazing customizers out there and there's a guy called Emma Solo and he's doing some very brief tutorials, live tutorials on how to do painting on figures. Uh, he recently did one on eyes which was uh, quite good. Pretty much just follows the same technique as me. But he does a really good trick on a um, an X-Wing Luke where he gets perfect eye dots which uh, was awesome and they weren't cross-eyed which was pretty cool. So here I'm painting on the lips. The lips are tricky because you've got to get the fullness of the bottom and the slight little two points at the top without making it look like she's got trout pout. 
don't know if they have plastic surgery in the Star Wars universe. Senny's head painted, I'm now moving on to Bria, as you can see just using a little bit of watered down blue. I don't want it to be too dark on her eyes. And then pushing my finger up against it just to create a bit of steadiness. Did alright on the first one, the trouble is when you're trying to duplicate it on the second one it's always a little bit more challenging. So there we go, you can't really see it because of the bright light of my magnifier and also my big fat hand is in front of the camera. But yep, I am painting on the eyeshadow. And there we go. It's probably a little bit too dark, but what I can do afterwards, if I've done it too much or too heavy, you can just go get the same flesh colour and actually then touch it up and shorten the eyes and curve it a little bit. There we are, now painting the lips, again being very very careful not to give her a trout pout. Starting from the centre and moving a little bit outwards to create the natural dip of where the lips dent at the top and if you do fill that in don't worry about it because afterwards you can just get a bit of flesh coloured paint and just stick that little little divider at the top so there we go that's the super ridiculously tricky part over with that's the uh, makeup and lips done uh, the next super tricky part that comes in is doing the eyebrows and the eyes but before I do that, I'm going to let them dry off for a very good period of time. So for doing the eyebrows and the eyes, I'm going to be using a my matte paint. The reason why I'm going to use this is it's quite a good, nice, thick, consistent paint. And then the trick is now to use something super, super fine. Now there's loads of different ways. If you go to the Smuggler's Den and look at Em's video, there's so many different ways of doing eyes. It's just finding what works best for you. I've got these moulding tools, so they've got a very fine point on them. You tend to find the sharper the point, the less paint you're going to get on it. And what happens is the paint is drawn away from the point of the sharp implement. So you need something that's probably a little bit blunt. As you can see, if I point that onto my test piece here, nothing much happens. But if I just dip it slightly at the side, I can get a good dot, even though it's a little bit too big. So you've just got to be careful how you apply it. And you get a couple of nice sized dots. A bit of practice. But that is again using the, the point, but slightly angled. And you've got to be careful how you do this. But again, if you do make a mistake, you can just paint over it again. Try again. So we've done one set of eyes and move on to the next set. Again, always find the second set is the hardest because you're trying to duplicate what you've just done on the first. The first one always works perfectly. The second one is always a challenge. Practice does make perfect, but when you're doing them sequentially, you, you get over critical. So here we go. Little dot of the eye. There we go. And that works quite well. Could use a cocktail stick. The thing about cocktail sticks are good is because it's wood, it holds onto the paint better. So you do get quite a nice splodge. we go and I don't think that looks too bad for the eyes and strangely enough I think I did a better job on uh, Bria than I did on Senny so I'm just going to go back and redo Senny there we go there's our eyes done so that was only doing the pupils. One thing I need to do is to do their eyebrows and also the ridge above their eye. They do have very heavy eye makeup around top and the bottom, but I don't want to do that because I'm going to end up looking like they've just got two black eyes. So I'm only going to do the indents at the top of the pupil, 
much like the vintage Star Wars figures. So if you look at Leia or Luke or anybody like that, they just have the upside, upside down smile with the dot. That's why I'm just trying to duplicate slightly below the eyeshadow. Now when it comes to doing the eyebrows, a fine brush is great, but sometimes I find if you use a scalpel or a Stanley knife and just get a little bit of paint on the end, you can gently just pop that bit of paint on and then pull it away slightly to create the eyebrow. And just use the point of it to almost paint. And you can drag it across and that creates a nice straight eyebrow. Again, the challenge with this is, is getting both of them to look the same and also not making them look surprised or depressed, which when I finished these, realized they looked a little bit serious. So I went back with a little bit of paint and touched up, uh, reduced the size of the eyebrows and the angle of them a little bit with flesh color just to knock them back a bit. Ideally, probably one of the things to do for eyebrows, which I'll probably test out in the future, is to use almost like an ink pen with paint. So you could get a very fine nib on an ink pen and actually then draw that on because that would then pull the paint through. So I may look into that. But that doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to complete those two figures and then leave them to dry. So the next thing we're going to do is the hands, so we're going to use the flesh coloured paint and I'm using the flat wide brush again because it'll give me a nice flat edge to go up to the ridge that sits under the wristlets or cuffs, whatever you want to call them. Next thing I'm going to focus on is the belt, so using a black, whether it's gloss or matte, and a very thin brush, and you can see I've put gloves on at this point, it's just a case of going around the belt very, very carefully. It is slightly elevated, but it's not. there isn't too much of a ridge, but you can do a nice, neat black line going around the figure. Also going to paint in the front of the neck collar. Doing the same with the belt on Senny and also again filling in the neck piece. Next thing to do is to, uh, which you don't have to, but is on their cuffs, there's almost where the point is, that's actually a little black strip that's sort of like a diamond, almost goes to the wrist. So I'm doing that on both of, uh, both of the arms. And then once that's done, I'm just leaving them to rest. So at this stage, while the arms and the bodies are drying off, I'm just going to touch up the feet uh, and give the boots a final coat, as I think they've, they've properly dried off now. So again, using my flat brush, I'm just going to go over with a straight gloss and give them a really good coverage and also touch up the bottom as well. Once everything's dried off, the next thing is to add the details onto the belt. So I'm going to use one of my favourite techniques, one of these silver pens. And that's just a case of popping the silver belt buckle on. Be careful not to press too much because this stuff can ooze out. So only ever press the nib in when you're actually doing it on a test bit of paper. And then around the belt there's these tiny little squares which are elevated and on each of these you just need to add a little bit of silver detailing. There's usually enough ink on the pen to actually just pop them on but if not go away, dab the ink, put it back. You could do this with a paintbrush if you wished, silver pen, enamel pen, you know there's there's lots of chrome pens, quite a thick nib but there's, there's ways of doing it. You can always take some of the chrome out, put it into a little paint pot and then do it with a paintbrush. Last thing now is to put the figure together. So picking up the pieces, it's just a case of uh, being very careful to put them in the slots. And as you can see with the legs, they go in, gently put them in, but they're a little bit loose. So the way to sort out the joints is to use a little bit of super glue. Now you have to be very careful while doing this. So pop a little bit of super glue into the hole that you're gonna be putting the peg into. So, I'm sticking a blob in, oops. 
then get the leg, pop it in, and now what you have to do is just keep moving it. Be careful not to leave it because it will bond. So what I'm trying to do is I'm keeping the joint flexing with the super glue in it until I start to feel a little bit of resistance. Just moving it in and out slowly and what this is doing I'm just creating almost like a plug. So backwards and forwards keep going until you just start to feel a little bit of tightness, a little bit of resistance as the glue starts to tack off. And then once you do, pull the leg out and leave it to dry a good few hours. So I'll repeat this on the other side. And then again, leave it to dry off. So I'm going to repeat this on Senni. Make sure you put the legs in the right side. So as you can see, a little bit of resistance on the leg, but it's still a little bit loose. So that's why I need to use the glue. Try the same with the other leg. Yep, a little bit of resistance. Still a bit too loose, so that's why I'm going to use the super glue and I repeat the process. So once that's completely dried off, it's a case of just gently putting the leg in, twisting the body, making sure you don't snap the peg. And you can see it starts to firm up. But it needs to be dry. If you do this at all while it's still tacky, you'll just bond the two pieces together or snap the pin off. So you can see I'm gently pushing the leg in and twisting it at all times to get it to go in. this point I remembered I didn't put my gloves on so I put my gloves on because I'm trying to eliminate fingerprints on my paint job. Push them in once they're both in and now my legs are secure and they still move and they'll actually move and stay which is good. So repeat the same process with Senni. Now I'll pop the arms in. Now with the arms, the, the resistance is quite good, so I'm not going to need to put super glue in. There we go. So they both now stand. Pop the arms in. Now it is at this point I just want to highlight, I completely, completely forgot to paint the necks as the necks are meant to be flesh coloured. I actually am sat here looking at them on the shelf and it just dawned on me I completely forgot to paint the necks and I haven't included them in my video or in my photographs for my Etsy store so I'm going to do some update photographs but it's literally a case of just painting up to the the neck piece easy mistake so for the head the head's on it's gone on quite easily clips in a little bit of super glue onto the hair piece and then it's just a case of making sure you push the head in avoiding the strap that goes the the plaited hair piece that goes around the front get the edge of the hair up to the top edge and then it's just a case of holding the hair down while it tacks off with the glue so repeat this on both figures and there we go my tonicas with non-painted necks, which is the bit I missed, are complete. So there may be some final little touch-ups you want to do to the body, there may be some little bits you've knocked off the paint, but to protect them, to make the paint a little bit more permanent, you could use a coat of uh, Plastic Coat Clear Spray. Uh, I've got a matte finish one, so what I'm going to do is go away, spray them, give them a very quick coat. This will just help keep the paint intact. You could do this before you put them together, it's entirely up to you. Uh, mine are going to be on display so I don't need to go into massive detail and uh, do a proper decent coat but if you want them to be interactive and a little bit more ply playable then by all means just give them a very quick coat of the uh, clear finish plastic coat spray or a varnish as such and that will help protect the, the paint job. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you like my version of the Tonica Sisters. They are two characters that I have loved for a very, very long time. Um, they were one of my first early custom jobs where I converted a couple of reaction figures. But for me, they just didn't have that vintage feel 
and fit in with the the whole vintage Star Wars universe so hence why I've created these as this has been something I've wanted to do for a long time I'm quite chuffed to bits now that I've actually done it these will be available in my Etsy store I'll get them shipped out to you as soon as I can so thanks for watching hope to see you in some of my other future videos please remember to subscribe It's a junk.